Good evening and welcome to my live. Let's see if I can get this up and running. And if there is anybody there, if they can hear me. I'm not seeing. Not seeing anything. in the chat box. So if anybody is watching, I would appreciate a message to see if the, this is all going a bit crazy today because I have had to re reset my laptop and download all these um all the software again and it all looks different now because i thought i had been updating stuff but maybe i hadn't and um so now everything looks different i don't know what i'm pressing so even the chat screen looks different on here oh so you're there hello hello sandy hello boots and gypsy so i am seeing i am seeing you talking in the in the chat screen that's great Thank goodness for that. So we're up and running. So no worries at all. So it's Friday evening here in the UK and I am preparing myself to work a little bit on this um, lovely chart. I'm sure some of you recognize it very well. If anybody here is a Mirabilia fan or has done a Mirabilia chart before, or knows a bit about them, this is actually the only Mirabilia chart that I have. It's the only one I've, I've done. And I've done quite a lot actually, because I started in, I think it was 2020, but I hadn't done an awful, I hadn't been doing it consistently. Um, so it was on and off. So it's only in the last um, part of this, well, since the beginning of December that I have picked her up again and managed to finish all her top half here and surprisingly it's taken me only a couple of hours to get all these beads in um it's actually really quick to do the beading if you just actually sit down just to do a beading session and you have all your beads ready it's actually really quick to get through it um because i'm pretty organized with stuff like that so i've got all my beads into little little pill boxes and I find it it works very well to prepare the beads that I'm actually going to use uh, the ones that I'm using before I sit down and do them so I've got them all ready they're all labeled and everything so you know super ridiculously organized <laughs> it just does really help you know um, so in the last uh, couple of days I've managed to do all the top section for beads and it didn't take more than two two hours something like that it was really very quick um hello stitching stitching mo and hi lila and sandy and sarah nice to see you and robin good to see you bianca and neolikis nice to see you do um so it really is a lovely piece now i'm gonna actually attempt to do some beading now because why not and if my beads just go flying everywhere you can just sit there and laugh i don't mind it'll just be a little bit of a you know a comedy show but never mind <laughs> i will attempt it um they are such tiny tiny little beads that you can do you you will lose a few there's no question no matter how nimble fingered you are they are small i'm actually going to show you before i start any beading where i'm keeping them because i know some people are really interested uh, i shall use this camera i think so here I've actually labelled it. Sorry about the the light on that there. So there I've got pill boxes with all my little beads. It's actually a double sided box. So on one side I've got beads. On the other side I have this uh, whisper thread. So this is the thread used. I'm not sure where it's used on this chart, but it's really probably the most hideous thread to use. It's 
look how that thread is with all those little bits coming out of it I haven't used it yet obviously but it will be my first attempt when I do that's going to be a lot of fun I'm sure so I got all these little pill boxes and I put all my beads and I've got the names of the beads and I've got the number down the side even the little symbol yeah crazily organized right but that helps me to just stitch all the beads that little bit quicker um, like I said I, I've only ever done one chart before that has used beads so I've only got one chart's practice with beads and I didn't find it too difficult yeah I lost a few of them I mean I think you're always going to lose a few beads um, down the line there's no question because they are so small so today I'm going to attempt doing and I, it's a bit of an awkward angle, I'm afraid. I'm going to attempt, I'm going to actually zoom in a bit and attempt to do a few of the beads along here. So I'm working my way down, actually, with the beads. And I've done a lot more on this chart. I wonder if I can zoom out a bit more so you can see. I fair done quite a lot of her dress and everything. I can't really move this stand too easily, so... As long as we get to a section there you can see all the beads let me just oh I want to you can see all the beads that I had done here last night they are fairly clumped together now um, it's not difficult that you have to actually put them all in the same sort of little rows it might look a bit fiddly but it's not too bad there's plenty of space this is a is it 16 count? I think this is a 16 count Ida and you can use 32 count if you want to use that instead and do two over two. Um, so I just I just love the way that they I actually love the way they feel as well. It's very sweet. Now let's see if I can zoom into the actual area that I'm going to bead. Talk about fiddly. I think that'll do. For the moment and if i can start beading up here you get to see all my beads flying around um boots and gypsy says i've done this piece and she's gorgeous i love most of all the mirabilias and i've done several mermaids and queens just recently finished miss christmas i need to get a friend oh that's lovely i don't actually know if i'm going to do another one i haven't decided i probably will at some point down the line um, I, I haven't seen another one as yet that has really sort of grabbed my attention hugely. Um, I think I need to look at them a little bit closer and actually, you know, kind of get a feeling for the, for the actual piece before I decide on one. I like to see other people's finishes if they have them and, you know, have a good think about it. I don't immediately see a mirabilia and say, yeah, I have to have that, I have to have that. I like to kind of build up some sort of relationship or get the feeling that I really, you know, I'm starting to like what I'm seeing. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll wait till I finish this one first and then I'll see. I've seen, I think there's a new one that's just come out. I forget what it is called. It's kind of related to nurses or something like that. I think she was saying... Uh, Florence Nightingale could it be or something like that and it was really quite sweet I quite liked it oh there goes my needle and thread oh, we haven't even started I'll just I had threaded my uh, I put a thread on my needle just to be even more prepared um, hello Janet nice to see you how are you doing with your projects and what are you stitching at the moment Boots and Gypsy, my husband says she looks a little stuck up. Yeah, she does, but obviously she, she can be stuck up. She's the snow queen. Anyone who's a queen is allowed to be stuck up, right? Yeah, she's totally oblivious and she's hanging on to her reindeer and she's decided she wants to get back to her to her little castle because, yeah, why does she have to deal with us, you know? Um. <laughs> Hello, Julia. Nice to see you. 
the beading really brings it to life. I wonder if I can put my little, I have one of these crazy lights that goes in your forehead and every time I put it on, it makes me laugh so much. But it's really useful for other stuff, not just for, for stitching. Like how useful is this when you look inside like a dark cupboard or something and you want to see what's down there. I wonder if I shine the light on it, whether those beads are really popping there or if it's too much light. Can you see the lovely colors on those beads, the sheen, the shine. And I didn't know, oh, I love the teardrop, the little teardrop she has in her ear. Oh, I can't turn this off. Um, these long ones are called bugle beads. They're really interesting. I quite kind of like those too. So what I'm going to use now, if I can get my Larry Stein to behave. I wonder if I can go in a bit more and focus. And hopefully it's focused there. Yeah. And I'm going to have a go with these ones. They are seed beads. That's what they are. So I've got them all inside this little pill box. They're white, really sort of shiny white. Hi, Michelle, and hello, Melissa, and hello, Woo Woo. I'm glad you could make it. I think I'm crazy because I thought I would try and do some beading live. I mean, has anybody else done beading live? This could be the first ever disaster, but we'll see. <laughs> um, so you've got a snow-covered Ontario oh my goodness we're all dealing with the cold at the moment we've had minus temperatures all week and it's been so difficult to stay warm because we have such high ceilings and we're just not getting the heat we're just not feeling it enough and um the heating is kind of going on and off and on and off and then as soon as the as soon as you turn the heating off it gets cold again so you just want to turn it on again and nothing outside is is you know calling to you to go out for because it's so cold and it's really slippery because it's not snowing and just stays snow it's been raining and icy and sleet and then the sun comes out for a bit but it's still you know cold and then it rains and everything turns mushy so the chances of me slipping and falling are like so high because i i don't have good sense of balance at the best of times so when i'm walking down the street I honestly look like I'm 120 years old. I'm holding on to everything I can just to walk down the street. Um, I just don't trust myself. And yeah, it's not much fun because I don't want to be stuck indoors the whole time either. So yeah, I, I'd like to be able to still get out. But I'm scared because I've seen a couple of people already, people already slipping, you know, slipping and falling. And it, it's not, it's got to be painful. And nobody wants that just before Christmas. Um, Linda says, I finished Snow Queen for a great granddaughter and just sent it to California from our home in Northern Michigan. I thought it had a lot of beading till I did at the Met in November. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot of beading in this. There is quite a lot of beading. So, hey, shall I just give this a go and see if I can get a couple of beads in whilst you guys chat. Now, I'm using, for my beading, I'm using this two strands and I'm using the same floss um, as I'm using for the chart. Uh, this floss is uh, just regular, D uh, well this isn't silk, this is regular DMC I've got now, but I am using the silks that the chart calls for in other places. And what I do, is I get my place where I'm going to stick a bead in if I can. So there we are. I wonder if I need to bring my camera down just a teeny weeny bit more. Or is it up? No, it's down. There we are. How is that, guys? Does that look okay? I can't see a thing. 
Um, then I kind of lick my finger and I get one of those teeny little beads on my finger. Because it stays stuck there. And then I thread it through the tiniest, tiniest needle I can find. Push it through. In fact, I don't even have to actually push the bead through because it'll just go down anyway. And, you know, funnily enough, we're going to end up having four beads inside this little area and they're all going to be stuck next to each other. So the thing to do is to make sure that they're all leaning the right way, that they're all leaning the same way. Because if they're not going the same direction, they look a bit odd, I think. Now, I don't know if that's something I read as like a tip about going in the same direction. I think that was just like an instinctive thing. Like it seems to make more sense. The same way that when you do your crosses, you do your crosses in the same direction all the time. Um, I think it just occurred to me that I should maybe do my um, come up the left, say the bottom left and go down the top right so that all my beads are facing the same way. Oh, don't you swivel on me now. So I'm not quite in front of this canvas. I'm kind of sitting at an angle. So I'm not definitely not going to be as quick as... I normally would be because yeah it's difficult to get all the cameras in the right angle so come on now so I think I only lost two beads yesterday in the whole time that I had stitched that I was doing the beading which I think is pretty good and I absolutely don't mind doing the beading at all. It is a nice little break from just doing, using thread all the time. It's actually a nice break to actually do the beads. Do you know what? I'm just gonna double check I've got the right color beads here because I'm so messing around all the time that I just wanna check one zero zero. So I've got two boxes out. Yeah, they're the right ones. So I'm supposed to be using these white ones. They may not show up too great on the camera. Did I put a bead on that? No, I didn't. Yeah, a couple of times I've, I've done it without actually putting the bead on. <laughs> so it sort of defeats the object, doesn't it? I'm trying not to play tiddlywinks with them. You know, when you kind of clip the, the bead a little bit on the edge and it just goes ping, bounces off somewhere else. This, I tell you, this is very relaxing, actually. Very relaxing. And the fact that you can get loads of beads on in, say, one evening feels really accomplished. It just, do you find, do you feel really accomplished when you can get something like beading done? In like a short amount of time um because i mean you can start the evening with no beads and you can end the evening like that with tons of them it looks really good so i don't think i'd like the beads to be any smaller than they actually are i think the seed beads are small enough to be honest that's about as small as i would be as i would be happy with there goes another one. You can see it there on my thread. And just the two strands, I think, is enough. I think last time, I don't know why, but I was using one strand and I was going through twice, going through the actual bead twice to like as if I had two strands on the on the needle. And all my, all my, the ones I'm picking up, I'm picking up from this little plastic, little plastic box just to keep them all contained. So that they don't start pinging off everywhere.
Now I have not done the reindeer. I think after when I've done feeding on her um, on her dress, when I finished all the bees on her dress, I might do all the beading. When I finished all sorry all the DMC colours and silks on her dress, I might do the beading on her dress, and then I will do the reindeer and. I, will, I think I will finish the whole reindeer before I do the beading. I think it would just, because I worry that if I, if I keep stopping and changing from beading to stitching to beading to stitching, I might miss where some of the beads should go, or it might get a bit confusing. I've done the whole top half of her up to about, there's just a few more beads I need to do here. I think you can see there's a gap there. There's a, gap, a couple of little gaps. So I've done the top half of her completely almost apart from one or two beads there um, and I only need to do the bottom of her skirt which I will finish before I do the beads obviously then I will move on to reindeer and then do the beads on the reindeer uh, thank you Amy boots and gypsy says do you bead as you go I missed if you showed the entire piece before you started doing the beading yeah just saying I I I decided to do some beading to, uh, yesterday. I just felt like doing it. I, I said, well, look, I, I finished the whole top half of her. Why not just put some beads in? Um, I'm using the 11 by 17 Q-snap frame. So she is vertical on the frame. So I'm not crushing any beads at the moment by using by having a Q-snap over it. Um, so because I've done the top half, I don't need to have the top half of this really on in my, you know, on my Q-snap. But I have, I have her like this now so that you can obviously see, so that you could see the top half. But when I go to do the beading on my own when I'm not live, I will probably take her off the Q-snap and... I might work on my very small hoop just in the sections of areas that I'm beading. So I've got a really small hoop. I can't remember what size it is, probably about six inches or less. Um, and I just go and do a little section of beads and then I move the hoop and do a little section of beads so that I don't crush, you know, any surrounding beads that I've done further up or to the left or to the right. Because I'm kind of just moving, sweeping down. In, like At the moment, I'm sweeping all the way down and probably going to go sweeping left with the beads. So yeah, I may well bead a bit as I go. Um, I don't think I'm going to leave all the beads to the end. I don't think I would like to leave all the beads to the end. To me, that feels like too much of a huge chore for me. <laughs> kind of enjoying having done a few beads yesterday was nice. It really does finish her off very well, I have to say. She definitely looks very glam with her beads in. Um, whoops, now I can't even see the beads. Now I'm slightly concerned because my cat is here. Obviously she doesn't take pay any attention to my beads beading or anything, but you never know. I haven't dropped any yet, so I'm not worried. And she is asleep there. But I do want to keep an eye on her because, well, you never know with cats. They, they like to do naughty things when you're not looking, don't they? Isn't that right, Misty? Keeping my eye on you. Um, Julie says, when I did beading on my last mirror, I did it in hand and it worked really well. I think I tried to do a bit of beading in hand, but I found that my um, fabric is so soft that it's really not easy to keep a firm grip on, even on the little area that I was beading. And I was constantly pinching my finger through it. So I, I honestly don't mind stitching in hand but I think I would like I would prefer to do it on a slightly stiffer fabric this one like even here on my Q snap it 
feels not taut enough and I have got it as you know as tight as I can possibly get it so that's eight beads that I've got in there already I don't know if you can see it just there so there's four there and there's four above it and they're kind of going up on this uh, I don't know what this is called a tail a veil something that she's wearing that's kind of flapping behind her yeah I think slow and steady kind of wins the race with this. And I think when you bead, you kind of get better as you go, get more confident as you go. I think I was too scared to even, to even pick one up the first time I did any beading. I was like, oh my God, I'm just gonna lose them all. But no, it's like, you know, after you've done about 10 or 15, like oh, this isn't too bad I don't have shaky hands or shaky fingers or anything but my husband does have like a little shake to his hand so I don't know how he would cope with doing something very you know fine and very delicate um, he often says he finds it difficult so he might find something like this with these tiny beads a little bit awkward say so, now got two left in there I have to get some more on the go so yeah I'm being brave by beading live there we go there's another four going in here when I did a whole section last night I left I'd done a whole section and then I had um, oh gosh my nose is getting itchy now floss tube itch um, I thought great I've done like 15 beads and then I ended my thread and then I found that I'd missed one I'd missed one bead and then I thought shall I just be lazy and just leave it and do it in the next color of beads that are around it or shall I go back in and do that one bead <laughs> and I did I went back in and did that one color bead because it's not something I think I'll ever remember that I'll say oh my god that bead shouldn't be there it's a different color I just thought don't be lazy just go and do it it'll only take you like two minutes but yeah that's frustrating when you're like I've done all of them. It's like, oh no, I haven't. I haven't done them all. And that's easy. That's easily done because they're so like clumped around each other as well. Uh. Oh no, what happened? Oh no, it's okay. Yeah. So I'm now going to open my box you'd honestly think I was doing like some intricate surgery or something the way I'm so precise with everything <laughs> so careful with them um, on to the next okay one more for this little clump of four And on to another. I think I better look at the instructions now, just in case I'm getting carried away and just beading. Um, uh huh. Okay. So I've got three beads. I'm actually going to mark off what I've just done, because even though it's not DMC, I still want to mark off the beaded part of the chart. I need to backtrack a little bit because there's some beads down the bottom here. There's three of them in the same colour. Um, Grandma Sandy, nice to see you and thank you for watching. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas too. 
and a very happy new year. Boots and Gypsy says, this isn't about Mirabilia, but just recently I've tried some of the Dimensions kits. My question is, how do you get a frame to fit when you're doing the edges when the fabric is so rather skimpy? Yeah, that is a difficult one. And that has happened to me, especially when using a kit and they give you fabrics that are not giving you enough border to use um, on things like Q-snaps or frames. Um, the only way I've ever got around that personally is by using maybe a hoop or something that has a very small lip around it and I can kind of go as close to the edge as I can really um, so that you know not because the Q-snap edge is really quite thick so you need a lot of fabric quite a good bit of fabric to overlap a Q-snap frame I don't know about scroll frames because I don't use them. I think some people can also, what I've heard some people do is that they've sewn extra fabric around the edge so that they can then have more fabric to overlap on an edge. Um, or like what I do, just use a, use a hoop or even stitch in hand. So I don't think there's anything else. When you're using a shop bought fabric, Unfortunately, they just they decide on how much border you get and this happened to me actually when I started uh, working on some Disney themed I I subscribed to a Disney um, magazine and it was like one some of my earlier videos are on this and um, they gave us a piece of fabric to do uh, some Disney characters and they did not all fit that well in this fabric and I think they left such a tiny tiny border that you really really felt like you were not getting enough space even to put it on a hoop or anything and people were complaining about it saying I really don't know where to start this chart that it's not going to go off the edge because it's so so difficult this was supposed to be for beginners as well so I found it a bit crazy that they couldn't just have given you that, you know, even if it was just half an inch would have made a difference. And a lot of people were complaining about it because it's just like, why couldn't they just, you know, give you an extra half inch or something? Why did they have to make it so tight that you couldn't really use a proper frame on it or anything? So it really put me off and it put me off even subscribing and I just cancelled my subscription and everything because I thought, you know, I'd rather get into doing that's when I started buying things like my own hoops and my own Q-snaps and my own fabrics. Because at least if you're buying your own fabric. And you always have the option to do that with a kit. You don't have to use the kit fabric. Um, there's an, always an option that you can use your own. But I find buying my own pieces gives me more flexibility in size, dimensions and you know, how I'm going to frame it, if I'm going to frame it, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it gives you, just gives you a bit more flexibility. The dimensions chart that I did, I think I used it on a Q-snap, but I think I just about got the overlap just enough for the Q-snap to actually, you know, cover it up. Um, there wasn't much left beyond that. Once I'd got the dimensions piece of fabric onto a Q-snap frame, there was no overhang behind at all, hardly. But I did manage to just about do it. So I hope that's something useful in there for you. Oh no, you know what I've done? I've put two beads. That's because I've been chatting. I've put two beads onto the same stitch. So I'm going to have to pull one bead out. Thankfully that's not too tricky to do. So I was fine going steady, trying not, not, not trying to rush it. I don't make that many mistakes. And also, if I'm not chatting <laughs> and I'm not 
looking at the television screen or listening to my a podcast or my audio, which also, I know you say listening to audio books. Some people think listening to audio books is, is, is a good way to go stitching, but sometimes they get so into the story. I make mistakes because I'm not counting or I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. So to be 100% fully engaged, I, I can't be doing anything else. I just should be watching what I'm doing. However, I still like to, you know, I still like to multitask. So I like to stitch and listen to audiobooks or podcasts or the news or whatever it is. Um, so I just kind of compromise a little bit. Um, hi, Apsis TJ. Nice to see you. She says, sometimes the colour in the kit fabric is just boring. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It can be just boring. Now, I've never purchased one of these. Did I put a bead on here? See? No, I didn't. <laughs> sometimes fabrics can be so crazy, I think, that for me personally, if there's a lot going on in the chart, if there's a lot going on in the picture, I wouldn't want to use anything too gregarious as a fabric because I feel like it would detract, it would take away from the work that you're doing or that you've done. Um, but I think sometimes they still look nice. You know, some people like to have really mottled fabrics with lots of different colours in them, even though the picture itself is, is very colourful. And that's fine. I think we've all got like a personal, um, we've all got a personal taste when it comes to fabrics. So really with this one, because I'm not that experienced, to be honest, I'm really not that experienced with, you know, fancy fabrics. Never tried 32 count. Uh, the highest I've ever done. Actually, no, I lie. I'm, I think my Celtic lady is was 28 count. Yeah, she must have been 28 count. But I've never done 32 count and I've never worked on a very mottled fabric or a very colourful fabric. Um, so I'm not the best person to give any advice on that. And so for this piece, I wanted to choose something plain. I think this one that I'm using is actually the recommended, yeah, it's the recommended fabric. So for this model, you could use, this was the recommendation from Mirabilia. You can use 32 count twilight blue linen by Witchelt Imports, or as an alternative fabric, 16 count twilight blue ada. And this is 16 count twilight blue ada. I just fancied using ada over linen. I think linen is what I used for my last, um, the Celtic lady design I did and yeah linen linen takes linen is beautiful takes a little bit of practice because the stitch the the weave is so uneven that it's very stretchy and pulley and you get the slubs like yeah just look up slubs on fabric and you'll see what they look like <laughs> and it takes a little bit of getting used to so did I put a bead on this one? I did. I always panic a little bit that I'm going to run out of beads, which is why I try to be so careful about not losing them. So that is, wait a minute, I can't see here. Have I gone down the wrong hole? One, two, three, no. I think I have. That's right. Just melt that off. So these are the white. I don't know if these beads have got a name. I have a number written on them. I don't know if they've got an actual name. Um, Going good, guys. Going good so far. Not a single bead lost. Still able to chat. <laughs> Although to me, they're not all looking completely straight. But I think once you have it framed and up on a wall, 
do you think anybody's going to say that little bead there the 15th bead in the middle on the left four rows up is slightly crooked <laughs> i really don't think they're going to say that at least i hope they don't because if they do i will be very worried about them So I've been focusing, let's talk about the widths now, I've been focusing on this one since the 1st of December and I've mostly been doing work on this on the weekends, however I think I put it out one Wednesday or one Thursday or something extra and I thought I was only going to work on this one in December but I'm thinking now, I've changed my mind and I want to focus on this one every weekend. I want this to be my weekend stitch until I have her finished. Um, once I finish her with all the beads, I mean like an FFO. Not necessarily framed, but I just want the whole thing finished. I'm going to pull out my London chart and make that one my new weekend stitch. So my weekends are going to be um, non-hade, non-hade for weekends. And that gave me a break from doing hades because that's what I seem to do all the time. And after a while you do get a little bit tired. Um, and I want to, yeah, so I think I've got a good chance of finishing her. I don't know how long it's going to take me now. I've got to do the whole reindeer still. Um... So I'm thinking maybe a couple of months if I do it every weekend. Um, yeah, or two, three months, maybe less. I don't know. And then I can get on to, then I will have a finish. Oh my God, I'll have a finish. I can't believe I'm saying that. And then I can get on to doing my London chart, which I'll be bringing out and parading again once I've got, you know, this one, this one done. And then once I finish the London chart, I'll pick out one of my other non hades and that will be the next weekend and on like that. And I think that it gives me a chance to have not just getting hade progress, but to be getting progress on the ones that are not hades as well, all within the same week. So I don't know. It sounds like a plan that I could keep up and and not get too bored with. So let's see. Um, so come on guys, what are all your new year stitching plans? Or do you not have a plan? Do you just want to do whatever you takes your fancy? That's quite normal. Oh dear, I forgot to put a bead in again. This is happening too much now. I keep forgetting that I'm beading and actually going to do a, cross, a full cross. My eyesight is getting poorer as well, I think. Because I used to have such great eyesight. <laughs> but I have to take my glasses off to see the screen, to read your comments. I have to put my glasses on to see the beads, to do the beading. It drives me crazy. Like on, off, on, off. Oh yes, yes TJ, viewing distance covers a lot of stitching errors. So if you think that you've done a piece that's particularly poor, you put it right at the very, 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 very end of a very, very long hallway and you tell them to look at it from one end and say, don't pass this line. Look at my stitching from this line right down there. <laughs> or you put it as high up on the wall as you can so that they, they can't get a good, you know, good view. Um, 
yeah the stiffness should get better i don't think this one is i don't think this fabric is stiff enough for me to stitch in hand if i stitch in hand i'd like it to be when i see the stitching mummy and she's fantastic at stitching in hand i've never seen anything like it when she stitches in hand her fabric seems to be quite stiff and i noticed that she uses some a lot of something called monaco and i'm wondering because i've never used monaco if any of you guys use monaco is it a particularly stiff fabric? Is it stiffer than even weave or the magic guide stuff that a lot of people use? Um, I would like her, I think I prefer to have stiff-ish fabric when I'm, if I was ever to stitch in hand. And I don't know, I just, I find it difficult to, the other thing is when I stitch in hand, I know it's probably best to, to have a pillow or something you know so your hands are raised higher but I always forget to do that and if I'm doing like when I was beading a little bit in my hoop last night my head was going lower and lower down and my hands were I was sort of like my hands were on my lap which is quite low down on the chair and in the, by the end I was kind of like that stitching and my god did I have a stiff neck when I went to bed last night I could well as soon as I lifted my neck up the creaking noises it made and I was thinking oh that's such a stupid thing for me to do I should have really um put a cushion or a pillow or something underneath and raised my hands I should have been stitching about here so that my neck didn't suffer but no you know I just I'm I just being an idiot and then my husband said to me, what are you doing? You know, you're kind of crouching over like this. And I said, I know, it's killing my neck. I don't know why I keep doing it. So that kind of put me off. <laughs> so having a Q-snap has helped me, actually, because what I do is I make sure that the area I'm working on is level, more or less, maybe an inch or two, no more than that, lower than my face, my eyes, so that I don't do all this you know, crouching forward stuff, um, end up killing my neck. So yeah, I mean, it's so easy. I mean, it just takes like half an hour of forward crouching like this and you've got a stiff neck for two days. Seriously bad. Um, oh, let's see. We've got some plans. We've got some plans. Linda says, I do Mirabilis on Saturdays. That's what I'm doing, Linda, so I'm joining you. I'm gonna be doing this for the next few Saturdays for the next couple of months. Janet says, I don't seem to ever have a plan. Therefore, there are no plans to bring. <laughs> That's a great way to look at it, Janet. <laughs> it's very true. If there's no plan, you can't break it. You cannot change what isn't there to change. <laughs> Is TJ says working on Gamer Nouveau for a while now probably until I get to another quarter done then who knows now tell me if I'm wrong Apsis TJ but were you doing Cosmic Marbles or was that somebody else and I can't forget was that an Amy Stewart chart for Cosmic Marbles because I've seen a couple of people who've been interested in doing that chart and it's so beautifully colourful but it looks really crazy confetti heavy so for me, I don't know. I it looks a bit confetti mad, <laughs> but wow, those colours are amazing in that chart. Um, Julia says I'm trying to accomplish the six thousand stitches goal for your group. Fantastic. Then I'm starting a new mirror for a sal with Teresa Little Stitch and Needlebug. Oh, well done. And which Mirabilia are they doing? I don't know if I've got enough space in my head to start another Mirabilia. I'd have to see which one it is and how nice it is. And don't enable me, please. <laughs> I've just de-enabled myself recently and, but I'm a very vulnerable person. <laughs> Sarah says, I'm trying a four week rotation one major whip a week, plus working on my map and one small one YouTube. That sounds like a good, that sounds like fun because you get to do 
a different bit of you know different thing every week Linda says I'm starting Miss Christmas Eve Christmas Day have I seen that chart rings a bell founding fathers by Twin Peaks primitives New Year's Day oh my goodness what's more what can be more exciting than a new start on New Year's Day I can't think of anything more exciting than that to wake up on the 1st of January and have everything kitted up and ready to go and know that you just have to sit there put in those first few stitches I can't think of anything more exciting than that to be honest not even you know the hangover of having such a wonderful night the evening before um, <laughs> or knowing that it's a brand new year how exciting I think everybody should plan a new year start like maybe on the first day of the year plan the next year's new year's start even though you have to wait a year to start it it's just like you know it's coming like you've got all year to be excited about it <laughs> Sarah says I'll be starting a new long dog in January Ooh, I don't have any long dog samplers I have looked at them and I have admired them but my goodness they look just apart from looking incredible they look scary to actually take on board like very intricate I, I would think um, Apsy says I think if I remember correctly it's just an even weave I think I've used it but I can't really remember okay Julia says I'm starting this Christmas Eve too oh there we go two of you are starting the same chart how exciting maybe you can do a little sal <laughs> together <laughs> Apsis says there's a brand that gives its fabric a name from a place based on count might be that I have the cosmic chart I haven't started yet it's Amy Stewart I knew it was Amy Stewart because Every time I see an Amy Stewart chart, there's something about it that's very recognisable. Um, it really does. You can tell that it's one of her sort of designs or styles of charts. The Cosmic Marbles is very different to her usual shelf stuff. Um, but she's, yeah, she's got amazing charts. Very, very colourful charts. Julia says, some are doing the new Magwayan. Have I said that right? But you can do any fancy lady man, even one already in progress, no hard and fast rules. I like it when there's no hard and fast rules, so you can be a bit more flexible about stuff. Um, and thank you, Grandma Sandy. It's nice to chit chat with all of you. And also, I'm pretty impressed that I could actually get any beading done on a live. So, yeah, I was. I, I had no idea how this was going to turn out. So I thought I would give it a bash and see if it was going to be a complete disaster or um, or if it was going to be a success. And I think I've, it's more or less a success because nothing's really gone wrong, touch wood. And even my computer has behaved. Oh no, see, as soon as I said that, nothing's gone wrong. I've just beaded two beads again. I know it's not the, the biggest four part in the world, but it still is a bit silly thing to do. <laughs> um, Janet says, I'll be watching the replay again. I'm at work, so I've missed a lot of the conversation. Well, I'm so glad that you stopped by, Janet. We have to catch up at some point. Um, I know it's a really busy time of year now. Everybody's um, not just stitching. They're all like planning, you know, planning the Christmas holidays, all the stuff that we have to get done now for next week when all the excitement starts. I put up my Christmas tree, but I couldn't leave it up for very long because my cat decided that it would be a nice little thing to wreck and to try and eat. So, yeah, my little Christmas tree had to come down because... I don't have anywhere high up that I can put it. That's the thing, a tree is a tree, right? So I just think it's not worth it because she was actually eating the stuff on the tree and I thought she's going to get sick. So I've put up lots of nice little decorations around the room where she can't reach them or where she doesn't bother to go. 
and I'm content with that because I feel that she's more important actually than a tree. So um, I've got a lovely little sort of decorative tree on my shelf and I've got a few ornaments around and stuff like that. So it still looks really nice and festive. And to be honest, I don't really miss the tree that much. I can live without. Better safe than sorry, right? Although I have to laugh at those trees that people say you should put up for cats that are like upside down and hanging from the ceiling. I mean, really, a tree hanging from the ceiling upside down? <laughs> I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> Michelle says, I'm hoping to start Celtic Tree of Life in the years. Ooh, my Tree of Life will come out when I have finished one of my haids. She is asleep until I've finished one of my haids and then she will come out and I will finish her. Um, what a beautiful chart that one is though. Plan to focus on all my haids next year. So all I feel like all I ever do is stitch haids. So I'm really happy to bring out this chart now again because I put her away for a while and it's a different kind of stitch to it's a completely different type of stitching to Hades. Hades is all like parking and going in rows and going in diagonals and you know completely different and I'm always using small counts so it's just so so different so it's nice to exercise different part of your brain do something like this which is not full coverage requires beading requires you know back stitching I just like it but I wouldn't like to be doing these all the time I think that wouldn't be for me I like to have a bit of variation and I think I'd only I only like to be doing like one at a time I don't think I'd like to pick up three or four of them or five of them I think I'd get so confused with the beads and everything like oh, which beads were for this chart which beads for the that chart um, so for me for my brain space I think one on the go of this type of chart is enough for me and yeah I'm really really happy with it and I'm trying to keep it as far away from the cat as possible because she's eyed it up a few times but she hasn't actually gone for it or tried to jump on it or chew at it or anything and you know uh, I think it's not likely that she would but cats being cats I don't trust her like she could get into a mood when I've left the house and one day I'll come back and there'll be no mirabilia It'll be just an endabelia. There'll be nothing. It'll be on shreds. So I just, I don't, I just don't trust it because you, you never know what cat's thinking, right? You don't know what's going on in their little fuzzy heads. They could be like looking at you adoringly and planning to kill you at the same time. That's the thing with cats. Now I don't know if I'm going. I think there was one little bead here I've missed. There's three there, and then there's one, two, okay, three. Okay, I did miss a bead. I missed a bead. Oh. There's no way I can miss a bead. Down here. There we go. I mean, I don't think it would be the end of the world if I got a bead in the wrong place. But I'm being so fussy about it at the moment. It would just irritate me, might be the thing, if I put a bead in the wrong place. Probably wouldn't irritate me for long, but I would just feel a little bit careless if I did that. Three left, left. No. It's difficult to count where the beads go because cover up all the holes. I think I've got the right place. Yes, I do. No. Sometimes you can just be counting and counting and you do not know where that bead has to go. Okay. One more. Now this particular bead, this white bead, requires 
three packs, I think it is. So, yeah, there's an awful lot of white beads in this chart. Um, I think it's three. And the other one that needs a lot of beads. Yeah, this is the only colour that needs three packs of beads. Um, the treasures, like the little teardrop, which you can't see at the moment, but I did show earlier. The little teardrop earring, you only need one of those. And then you need five of a different type of teardrop, which I think goes onto the reindeer, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't have the picture of it here at the moment. So yeah, when you buy this, you do get the little, this is the little legend i think it is tells you how many beads you need of every little thing that you have there so it's quite it tells you everything you need to know really okay so i've done those two so that looks much more fuller now doesn't it because before i started there was a lot of gaps in this section and um, now it's looking much better. I'm going to zoom out again a little bit so you can see. For those of you that joined a bit later, you can see all the progress that we've got here. And maybe if I move this up a bit, you'll be able to see how far I've got. So here we are. This is as much as I've got down to the bottom of her. I'd started beading here and I haven't finished. I think I'd, so I'd started doing some beads and then I suddenly decided, oh no, no, maybe I should leave the beading till the end. <laughs> I stopped beading, then I went on to do most of her dress here. So I've got all the bottom part. If you see on the, on the left, on the little image, I've all the bottom, just the bottom part of the dress here to do. And that's as far as I've got. And there you can see, you can see there with the colours. See how those lovely beads shine? And these ones were very impressive as well. I think they're called bugle beads, I believe. Very impressive, these ones. And so what I'm also going to do is start working, making my way to the left here try and get her back onto here now onto the and there's so little backstitch that I had to do the only backstitch I had to do was a little bit on her face and around it so it's actually a really easy stitch I kid you not it's not difficult at all and I do worry about doing things that are too fancy um Do worry about doing things that are too fancy in case I mess it up. But clearly, it's not too difficult. So I'm going to put my needle into where I want to make the beads. So, slow and steady, and we get there eventually. So, oh yes, I still have to finish some of the hair going down here. There's a lot of beading still to be done on the hair. Yeah, but I think it's good progress because the last time I showed this chart, I don't think I'd even got any further than her waist, really. So all this has been done recently, the whole head, in a very short amount of time. So it didn't take that long, to be honest. Um, it was just solid stitching, no messing around, just my cup of tea, sit down, stitch for two or three hours every weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, and it just goes very fast. Um, Janet says, I haven't stitched anything with beads in 20 years. I just like to cross stitch, so probably substitute beads with stitching. Oh, that's a long time, Janet. Yeah, it, it beads like you have to, you have to really like them to do them um i kind of enjoy it i wouldn't want to do them all the time 
but when I do, I seem to be okay with it. I like the end result, the finish that you get. Um, Apsa TJ loves beading, but I really love doing it with my magnifier, so I thread the tiny eye. Oh, okay. I somehow, I seem to have been able to thread the little needle. I don't know how, it's an absolute miracle, but I seem to be doing it without magnifiers. Um, I think I'm just lucky. <laughs> Haven't needed a magnifier at all. But yeah, give me another 20 years. <laughs> um, Apsis says, mirrors and lavender laces look hard, but they aren't. No, they're not that difficult. They're pretty, pretty easy. But then I have been going quite slowly and methodically and not rushing it. But I'm sure if I try to rush it, it wouldn't look as good. I'd have beads all over the place. I definitely cannot be doing this when I'm in an, an anxious mode or when I'm feeling too anxious. There is not, this is not the chart I would be doing if I was feeling anxious because my hands might be so, um, so firm. I might just throw the beads everywhere. It's not something I would, you know, having said that, I find it quite relaxing to do the beading actually. I, initially I thought beading would just drive me crazy but it's actually quite relaxing if you're not rushing it. I think if you go rushing it, then it's just going to be a mess. <laughs> Linda says, the bead pack for the Snow Queen was so very pricey, but I bit the bullet because she's so gorgeous. I think she's, I think she's lovely. And she might actually entice me to do some more memorabilias. I think there's so many of them. I haven't seen, like, probably not even seen them all. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'd be that into the mermaids that much. Um, a couple of the fairy ones I found are quite nice. I just don't know if I love them enough to want to stitch them all. Um, I'd have to find one that really speaks to me. So I'm sure one of them would if I went looking. But I'm not going to go looking because <laughs> right now I just want to finish this one. Once I finished her and maybe when I finished the other chart that I started... Uh, by Thea Governor, which is called London. Then I may go looking. And uh, maybe by next Christmas, I may start a new memorabilia. Because I like to have a chart like this in, you know, in my stash. As well as my hades. Um, yeah, the beads were quite pricey. I, I agree. They really were. I'm glad I don't have to use thousands of them now. But... Uh, yeah, the whole thing together was quite a bit of money, to be honest. But yeah, very much worth it when you make the time and effort. And like my husband's not really into stuff like this, but he did actually say she looks really good. That's a huge compliment for him on this type of chart. Um, he thinks it looks looks really good. And he liked the, he liked the bugle beads. He thought they were cool. I hadn't seen them before myself, but when I saw them, I wasn't sure how nice they would look, but I think they actually do complement. I like the variety of beads and stuff that are going into this. It's not just like straightforward, you know, round bead. I like that there's a variation of sizes and colours. It really sort of very much fits the style. So yeah, eventually I would be looking forward to to checking out more of these type of designs. I think I think it would be a lot of fun to do. Um, so I think that's going to be me for tonight, guys. i um, going to have to go get myself a hot drink. Um, I think it was a little bit of a success. How many beads did I manage? Four, eight, 16. I did about 25 beads, which I don't think is too bad, considering I was trying to chat at the same time. And yeah, I want to say thanks. Thank you so much for joining me and for chatting to me while I'm stitching on my beads. Uh, I think it's been real fun and it's not as difficult as I thought. Having my stuff all prepared and organised made it so much easier for me to actually do it. And again, you know, going slowly and not trying to rush the whole thing made such a huge difference. So I'm actually looking forward to getting a lot more done on this chart and I'm excited to come back at some point and show you the rest of my progress when I get to actually doing the reindeer on the left side it's going to be so much fun 
I, I really love that reindeer, so I really want to get to it as soon as I can. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys. It's been great to see you again, and I probably won't be back until next year. So at this point, I have to say Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoy it with your families. And yeah, I'm sure you'll all have a wonderful time. Um, so yeah, I'll be back again at some point to update you and chat with you. But until then, take care and see you soon. Bye for now.